Okay, thank you. Okay, got it. Okay, so we'll just call the meeting to order. Um, this is the Cohasset uh, Portable Housing Steering Committee meeting. Uh, in attendance is uh, Laura Lind, Susan Sardina, Beth Tarpey, Mary Hines, and Paul Kearse. Uh, and we do have a quorum. And um, so the agenda was published and we're gonna go um, right to the uh, opening item, which is the update on affordable housing and development <clears throat> in which we have at least um, four items on the agenda. So uh, the first one is 808 Jerusalem Road. So I don't know, uh, Lauren, if you have any updates on that. I know that uh, Susan and I attended a meeting um, specific to the subject matter of fundraising for that, but. Um, okay, great. So I'll give a quick update. I did hear from Noreen Brown of Habitat for Humanity last week. She had submitted the paperwork that's necessary for the application for the formal filing to uh, the State Department of Housing and Community Development. So we got those signed um, and returned to her so that she could proceed with that filing. And then what she also had updated, oh, Rob is joining us now, I'll note. Oh, good. Just joining us. I'll wait, I'll pause for a minute. There he is. Hi, Rob. Sorry, sorry about that. Quite all right. I was just giving an update, so I just paused for a moment to give you uh, to loop you in. So for 808 Jerusalem Road, I recently I was in communication with Noreen Brown from Habitat for Humanity. We've got the paperwork signed and returned to her to proceed with the state filing for the application. And um, what she's also been working on with uh, Cindy Amara, who is the legal counsel for the Affordable Housing Trust, is just an extension of their closing date. And the reason um, that they're seeking that extension is solely so that they can finish their permitting process with the town and the state um, to you know completion because if for some reason during the permitting process they weren't able to move forward it would be um, you know a loss of an asset to transfer that without having them be able to actually do something with the parcel so that was the reason and um, that paperwork's going back and forth and we would be anticipating a filing with the local zoning board I would anticipate probably within the next couple of weeks and then they'll get into the queue to start their permitting process so 808 Jerusalem Road is moving along. I don't know, I'll pause if anybody else had any updates uh, before we move on to the next project that's on the list. Yeah, the only updates for 808 that we have is uh, Susan and I um, attended a, um, a meeting yesterday or the day before with Habitat just to talk about the fundraising aspect of it and uh, what kind of timelines there are and that type of stuff. So we're just really cursory to preparing ourselves uh, for additional meetings down the road as to how we want to move ahead. Is that about right, Susan? Susan, you're on mute. Okay, thank you. I've, I'm not used to doing this on my phone, but my computer is so unstable. It's crazy. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I was just starting to say that when you had to jump off and take your other call, we continued a little bit and we're talking, um, this was a meeting with Jill Tompkins, who uh, is with Habitat. And uh, we went over what the conceptual budget and uh, that she said was $521, $521,500. And that basically, um, they expect to have about a hundred thousand oh, dollars. Wait, now I've got three things going. Let me let me go off off my phone. Michael put his computer on. Yeah, but I'm trying to close. I don't know how to close on here. There we go. Susan, she's still there. So now you. There you are. Yep. You're on mute. You're on mute. Here we go. Here go. Okay. I'm on Michael's computer, so it's all different. Mine's a touch one. Sorry, everybody. At any rate, um, what she was saying that um, that we talked about a little bit after you were gone was just that 
I was trying to get it what the timetable is going to be as to when we need to start doing something just so we can know where we stand rather than just have meetings and keep talking. But is there anything we need to be thinking about? And we were talking about maybe trying to do an event that would be targeted with specific people who we feel, you know, might be inclined to, you know, be bigger donors, like thousand dollars or more. And um, I had thought about maybe approaching Ted and George, Ted Lubitz and George to see, since we've been, you know, working with them on another, you know, their project to see if they would be willing to do uh, the Red Lion Inn and maybe do something, you know, there like just a cocktail party or something that would be maybe in April to just kind of get things started. And then another event maybe in May or June, but, you know, there's going to be more meetings that we're going to have to have. Paul, I know you're going to be able to help kind of target people and um, figure out who it is that would be invited to this. So that's where it stands. One thing that she did say that I thought was really pretty interesting was that um, they've been in conversations with this concrete ready-made association with the possibility of, of that organization maybe donating and creating a concrete house, which I don't know much about, but it sounds intriguing. And if so, then that gets the, the basic frame of the house all, all built. And that um, apparently the town has to, we have to raise 75% of the conceptual budget, which ends up being about $391,000 before they can break ground. So we've got to keep that kind of a timetable in mind. So um, I suggested that we get together with um, the housing trust to see what their thoughts are on budgeting for this 808 and um, try to find out what we want to go to the community at large with to try and raise versus what they have or what they don't have to put in. So, um, you know, we might have to back into it where we, we raise whatever we can from the general public and then the balance would have to come from somewhere else. And she did say that the money's come from grants, uh, state and federal level to CPC or housing trust or wherever else it would come from. So uh, the concrete grant, the concrete piece that she was talking about is um, that's on a federal level uh, that they're bringing down to the local level where homes are being built using a, a certain structure of, uh, of, of concrete, if you will, where the, uh, the facade of the house is still a clapboard siding and all that other stuff. Well, you can choose what you want yeah. for the signing. Yeah. And then what they would do is, um, so it would be a grant where they would basically build the structure of the home. So if that was a 250 against our budget, that would cover that part of it. So they're looking for kind of a standalone project where they could do this and make it the, the case point for showing people how to do it and trying to get people convinced to build homes that way. Yeah, we'd be kind of the guinea pig, but she did point out, and I think it makes a lot of sense, is that especially where we've got a duplex as opposed to just a single freestanding home, um, that it would probably enhance the, um, the noise separation between the two units. And she did indicate that usually about $100,000 is um, in gifts in kind. So, you know, we can look to electrical from IBEW and other places like that. So, you know, we're still going to be responsible for a big chunk of this. Do we have a sense of how much that will be? Well, if we're looking at a hundred thousand, if, if the total budget, let's say 500, let's say 525, it was 521 and a half, but let's say 525. So if it's 525 and you've got about a hundred thousand gifts in kind, then you're down to 400,000. And, um, maybe we can hope to get a couple of hundred thousand from um, the trust. So then that's about 200,000. Sounds like to me, did I, am yeah. I doing so the math right? The, the trust is not expecting to write a check for a couple hundred thousand on this. So that's, we, we really need to, to, to work on that. I think they agreed to give already 60 or 70, right? Okay. I don't know how much we expected to get. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I, is that, that I, I feel like that's not exactly what Habitat had said. Like we we've given the land, you know, you know, we've so 
you know, I, I thought that they gave the impression that they were going to help raise money and that it wasn't another multi hundred thousand dollar bill to us that they would work with us to, to do that. What habitat? Yeah. Yeah. They would work with us, but I mean, the money we're responsible for it with them. So habitat, habitat would bring in the grant side of it um, and some of the in-kind side of it. Yeah. So, but um, the responsibility is of the, of, of the town. Our so, community. Yeah, yeah I, I think what would be good is, I think we want to be careful on how we phrase this because let's say the budget's 525. You know, we, we know that some of that should be able to get in grants, right? You know, so what, so what are we actually trying to go for? And we can say that that's what we're, we're, we're working to and hopefully Habitat's, you know, helping. But I mean, may, I, I, I'm at the Affordable Housing Trust meeting tomorrow. Uh, I don't think they were expecting to write a multi hundred thousand dollar check for this project. Um, Lauren, I don't know if you have any insight into that. You know, I, I don't, I definitely don't. When Noreen was in front of them, she never mentioned that. Yeah, so, I would agree with you. I don't think that's the anticipation. I know that they've committed to, like you said, approximately, I think it was $75,000 per the RFP uh, decision that the bid award. But other than that, I don't think that they're anticipating to have a, a much more contribution than what's already been allocated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's at least 325 that that we're on the hook for, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, so I guess we just have to find out from them, since we've we've promoted um, sliding the CPC money over every year during town meeting, they're mm -hmm. sitting on 500000 of housing money, I believe. What are they going to use it for if they don't yeah. use it to help build the first house that the Affordable Housing Steering Committee... I'm not and saying that they won't. This is just not something that they've expected at all. Yeah, okay. I, that was not brought up that, hey, you have to write a check for multi hundred no, thousand no, 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 dollars. To do that. that should have been done up front. We I got I screwed up. You know, it's like um, there was definitely the belief that Habitat was going to help us with fundraising and it wouldn't right. be all from the Cohasa community. But you're making it sound like and maybe this is just the way it's coming across is Habitat saying, give us three twenty five. We'll see you when you have that. You know, bye bye. You know, and it's like until you have that three twenty five we don't want to, we're not going to do anything for you. So well, they haven't set a figure, but it's basically, we have to raise 75% of the conceptual budget before they can break ground. And yeah. when we say, when they, we say, or they say that they'll help us, that means they give us tools, but they're not, you know, if somebody writes a check, mm. it goes to Habitat yeah. And, and it would be earmarked for this project, which is what I've already done. But, you know, and others, you know, yep. if they write a check, it goes to Habitat. So they're paying, but it's it's funds that have been raised through Cohasset's efforts. But is that uh, but it's all on us to do that is what it's sounding like. Well, well, technically, um, no, because they have um, they'll get federal or state grants um, oh. towards this project which is the Cohasset project, if you will. Yeah. So that goes towards the build, but it comes in under the auspice of the Cohasset project, not Habitat for Humanity, right? So mm -hmm. we're responsible to raise the 525 as, as the recipient of the home. So if they go raise 400 for us, it's still technically our responsibility to receive the 400 from them, convert it back to them as the yeah. funds for the project. So I think it's a matter of semantics that we have to yeah. iron out with Habitat. Because like, I know they have annual appeals and stuff like that. Like they, they, it's not like they have nothing, you know, it's like, and I'm sure we can get more from the, uh, fr from the trust, but I think it'd be good to understand what's the, actual ask what's a real like we're not going to raise four hundred thousand dollars from going and knocking on doors in Cohasset. you know it's yeah. like i mean my daughter goes to does canning at the transfer station and they make a couple hundred bucks so it's like yeah. I, I don't i that unless we have somebody with really deep but like somebody's not going to be writing fifty thousand dollar checks towards this i just don't see it um so i, just, I mean whatever it is it is i just think we need to be clear i just want to be careful about saying too big a number, you know, 
of like, oh, we got we need to write a check for three hundred thousand dollars out of the affordable housing trust because that's going to freak people out. And I don't think that's what we're really saying. It's like there's going to be some grants, there's going to be some other fundraising, there's some freight fundraising that we're doing, and then there might be a you know a gap. But right. you know, and we'll, and we'll deal with that as a well. Case. Where does the trust think the money is going to come from to build this habitat? Yeah, is Habitat going to start applying for the grants and stuff, or are they waiting for us to get to a certain point before they'll do that? Like she didn't address any of that. Because my yeah. question was the same as Rob's. I didn't think we were going to be on, I knew we had to do some fundraising, but I didn't think it was going to be 75% of the project. And I just asked. We, we, don't have to, we don't have to fundraise 75% of the project. Habitat will not start construction until 75% is in the bank. Yeah, the money has got to be there so that they know that they can start it and, and it's going to be able to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah, Lauren, yeah. Lauren has a question. No, yeah, I just wanted to add, I remember in a discussion and I think it was when Habitat visited the trust um, a couple months ago, they were asking about the preliminary portion of the funding strategy. And the way that they had explained it at the time was that you have to sort of start to have these larger conversations looking for those large ticket donors. And that's where you start. That way you lay the foundation, like you get, you know, a hundred grand and donated by, you know, whether it's one person or two, you're looking for those big ticket items. And that's what they kind of explained that it's like, you need to use your connections in the community to try to like start these conversations that they sometimes take like months to build these relationships, but that that's where they suggest that people start with funding. They do also help with their sort of uh, items, but it really is also about milking connections because people are trying to get these framework pyramid built. And then that's when we start to see like the gala events and you see the small donations then come in, but it really does take sort of this kind of uh, multi-tiered approach at building the fundraising. So I think that's what is being suggested. And that's where the Habitat and I think the trust were an understanding that, you know, we're somehow going to secure some of the larger pocket donors for some of the initial contributions and that's where the i think big number is sort of hanging in limbo because until we are able to do that we you're right we don't we have to seek an alternate rob do you think that there should be someone from the trust who is involved in this as far as the fundraising as well mm -hmm. yep so i don't know if you want to yep i'll bring that, that up subject yep. yeah but okay. so i'm so confused when will they <clears throat> go ahead and start looking for the grants that from the feds and the state when she didn't mention a certain that. amount promised we have to find out from the housing trust um because if um if they are just filing with the state right now then they have to go in front of planning i think once they get all the permitting approved then they would start yes they have to grants. they have to get their zoning it's actually from the zoning board here, but they have to do the state process, the local process it could take, I would anticipate that it would take, um, you know, at least two hearings of zoning board. So you're looking at like a two to three month permitting process for their decision. And then at that point, once they have all those things, they can then proceed with the, um, the, the completion of the sale, the transfer, which they asked for the extension for. And also I think that's when they aggressively start to ramp up the funding because they need to get the permitting in place first. Okay. And what's the permit exactly specifically for? The permit for what? Um, so it's essentially like a friendly 40B type of permit because they're allowing, um, it's like a comprehensive permit that goes to our zoning board to allow this different type of use in this um, district. Because typically that lot wouldn't be permitted for multifamily. So they have to go to the zoning board, but under the affordable housing statutes, they're allowed to seek that relief. Um, through the zoning board to do that type of development. And that's how they've done it in the past. It just uh, is sort of part of the process that needs to ensue to allow this development to happen there. Okay. So is there, is there any further discussion on 808? No, I think that answered it. We'll just move on to 390. Sure. Um, stop and shop. Um, the update I have there is, uh, as you know, I'm a sewer commissioner, so we approve sewer. Um, for the property. So that all went through. Um, and uh, then we further took a vote to determine what kind of sewer. Uh, and it's going to be a gravity fed system um, as, as opposed to a force main system. So that was approved. Uh, next week, we have another meeting to approve site plans. So it's, it's moving forward. Um, 
I can tell you that um, all of the housing units are built um, complete. Um, and he is willing to give tours to folks who want them uh, to go take a look at the property. Some folks have already gone there. I, I haven't gone there yet. Um, so he's uh, would love more people to go see it. Um, he went in front of the planning board and the building commissioner to get a temporary um, hookup to the septic system that is currently at Stop and Shop. There's excess capacity there that uh, he went to DOT to see if he could do a temporary hookup so the apartments could be um, available um, and while sewer is being connected. So I don't know, last I heard it's the building commissioner has to approve it. Um, so I don't know where you stand on that, Lauren. I know it was in front of planning. Yes, it's still in front of planning right now. Um, there's a couple of other items on the punch list that we had gotten from the building inspector that they need to do before they get the certificates of occupancy. And um, you know, I'm not I'm not entirely certain on where they stand in the possibility of giving partial occupancy. I know that um, yeah. it wasn't something that was definitely agreeable to John Hallam when I spoke with him last. But I think he, there's a couple of outstanding items that he wanted to be. Uh, you know, buttoned up first in terms of the review that needs to occur, but it's all in progress right now. And they're scheduled to come back to planning board um, on December 1st to continue their hearing there. Okay. So that's, that's where that stands. Um, so it, it's, it's moving at the pace of government. Yes. <laughs> yes right. Molasses. <laughs> so um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions on that. Um, the next one was the 124 slash 87 Elm. So I would assume that's the Harbor project. Um, any idea, Lauren, where that stands? So we had returned the paperwork um, to that applicant so that they could proceed with their filing for the four units that are offsite, the deed restriction that's underway. Um, I don't have any further update other than that we gave them back the information to proceed with that filing. And, um, you know, I, I'll reach out for another substantial update um, to see when we would anticipate those units being SHI eligible. So, you know, last we talked to them, um, they weren't going to commit to those four units until they got a certain level of approval. I don't know if that was from the state or if that was from the town. Yeah, so they're all done with their town approvals. They're just waiting now on the state portion for the waterfront permitting, which I believe that they were anticipating um, by the end of this calendar year. And then okay. they were looking to then begin their demolition process, um, which, like I said, they looking at the last I spoke with them a few short weeks ago, they were aiming for the new calendar year to begin a demo. So I think all these things are coming up. OK, so, it, you know. If they're anticipating end of December, we can probably figure first quarter of 2022 for the state to respond and say, yes, we're, we're OK with it. Mm -hmm. um, or answer these questions and then we're okay with it. So my guess is that housing would become available, which would be immediate um, to be counted, I think, because it already exists, right? The units, it was just a matter of filing for the deeded restriction. Yes, I, the only caveat that I think is that in terms of displacement of residents, I know that they indicated that some of the existing residents may be eligible to remain in the units, but if they're not, and then they need to secure other housing, they're not going to kick them out. But, um, okay. you know, it, so that's just kind of the caveat there. I wasn't sure exactly where they stood, but I think that they were anticipating that most residents could, could continue to remain. So we can target that for, say, first quarter of 2022, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, that would probably be the fastest thing to counting. Uh, I don't know that CJC is counted. I, I know everything was filed. Um, and I know you sent out an email about the consensus, or I'm sorry, the census, uh, what they're counting and not counting it. I know there's some delays in that process. So we'll see where we land, I guess. Yes, we're anticipating at this time, given the um, anticipated release of the data that they use to calculate SHI, that we're going to continue to use the number that we have been using as of the 2010 census, at okay. least through the end of 2022. Okay. All right. Any further discussions on Elm? Uh, let's go with one Pleasant Street. 
Sure. So One Pleasant Street completed their planning board approval uh, and local approvals for that development. I have heard just through the rumor mill that the site is up for sale. So I don't know where that stands and as to the future of if whoever becomes the new owner will proceed with the plans that were put forth, but they are approved at the local level to proceed. And that was 14 units, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and any other sites? I know, um, Rob, you were talking to the gentleman who owns the spot across from St. Anthony's. Yeah. So um, finally got, so I went to the Affordable Housing Trust to ask them to pay for MCO to help them make, you know, help him make it um, affordable. They asked for some more information, just got that um, today. Uh, so I sent that over. And so we're hoping to get that approved tomorrow. Um, so that's about $10,000 to do the lottery and, and help them help him, you know, get everything submitted to the state with DHCD. Um, so once if they, they approve that, they'll, they'll make, MCL will make sure that it gets done. Um, and then we'll have three units, one unit, actual affordable three on the, uh, the housing stock because it's a rentable unit and it's more than 25% in the, uh, of the, uh, the, the place, but it's, you still got to build it, you know, so there's yeah, still yeah. some work to be done. Yeah. I don't think there was anything out there. Um, I know they were drilling holes at the old gas station. So Lauren, anything on the, um, uh, property there at, next to the red line in? Yeah. So we have had preliminary conversations with the property owner. She's come to the planning board informally to float some ideas. And I am not certain exactly as to how the application is going to shake out. We're anticipating receipt of a filing probably this December um, for, to, for to start a hearing in, in the early part of 2022. And the property will be, um, the concept is a mixed use development. They will remove the gas station, it'll be um, you know, first floor retail, and then a mix of, I believe she's going condos above. So, and she will fall under inclusionary zoning, no word yet as to how they plan to um, particularly break that down. But I know that she had been briefly here in the past to discuss with this group at one of our last meetings. And I know she'd entertain a conversation again as to you know how you might recommend or you know, feedback on her plans for, to fulfill that requirement. Okay. Yeah, we. Um, I knew at one point it was quite a number of units that were going to put there. Yeah, it's in the ballpark of fifteen to twenty. I think that's just planning. <laughs> wow. So. Listen, I couldn't get gas when there were three cars in the parking lot. You know what I mean? So I don't. How are they going to do that with parking? Are they going underground or? She's yeah. got some very innovative uh, parking ideas. So top yeah. parking. <laughs> More to unfold, but I'll keep you all in the loop as to has, how that shapes up and what kind of application we finally get um, in terms of their plan. Yeah, when Lauren first came on board, I was working on the Sawchuck project, which abuts that property. So we were trying to get the culvert moved. Right. Um, so it'll be curious to see if that sparks anything from Wayne to get something going. You know, um, he kind of put that whole culvert thing on hold for a while now. So I don't know what I kind of reached out to him and said, hey, look, this is starting to move. And um, so in the state budget right now that uh, I hope gets signed maybe this Friday, um, unless it already did get signed, there's a there's another big section of, of housing money that's coming. And a, a big chunk of it I sent off to Wayne, uh, which is uh, workforce housing. So both this condo unit and Wayne's place would qualify for workforce housing if they chose to comply with the regulations for workforce housing. And so, what are those? What are the what does that entail? It's kind of like affordable housing, only with higher income. Right. So, so for example, you'll see um, workforce housing could be at 100% area mean income, which then, you know, it, it kind of caps the rent that's available for those units so that they're more affordable than what would typically be market rate. But it's not to the level of qualifying for subsidized housing affordable. Yeah. And it, it, it actually works pretty well. So there's... Um, when you go on 3A towards Quincy, you go over the shipyard bridge, you know, you take that first left there at the set of lights, right at the shipyard across from it. Um, there's the, um, I forget what it's called now. I was gonna call it the Winston. Um, uh, anyway, the, the large apartment building that's there, condos. A third of it is affordable housing. A third of it is workforce housing. And then the other third is commercial. I mean, uh, 
uh, regular, yeah, regular market, market rates. Rate. Yeah, market rates, yeah. And I've, I've been through that, um, the, the um, um, we had a great meeting there um, with affordable housing, um, the affordable housing trust and NeighborWorks. Uh, NeighborWorks is the one that put the, a large part of that together. So uh, it's a beautiful place and, and it's full, you know, so, so it does work, you know. Um, the problem with the workforce housing is as soon as it's available, it's, it's gone like the next day. They're all, all the chits are taken, you know, so the funding dries up pretty fast. So it's in the new budget. We'll, we'll see if it, if it happens. So that, that'll be nice to see something going on in the village, um, kind of spruce it up somewhat. Um, any other comments, any other housing projects up, Lauren, do you know? Um, no, nothing that are coming to mind. I, I'll note that yeah. we had heard a couple months back um, from, from some representatives over at the, um, forgetting the name of it, but it used to be Avalon. Yeah. The preserve. They had yeah. reached out. Um, they had been doing some due diligence, digging around, talking to um, a couple of my colleagues in the water department, but we haven't heard anything since and I know that they had been looking into a series of their other sites so um you know again I can check back in and just see if they have any further interest in a communication but they were looking at that probably about I'd say four months ago they reached out nothing yeah since. I know um Clark Brewer reached out to them a year ago um when it was Avalon because I believe their capacity was 60 more units mm -hmm. um and they said no we're, we're done building um, so now with the new owners, perhaps that's what they're looking at. Right. It's a potential at least. So I'll keep you updated yeah. if anything else would come out about that. Okay. Awesome. So move on to a uh, town owned land review. Uh, that's on the agenda, Rob. Yeah. So the, um, affordable housing trust was reviewing the, the, we're talking about the land, um, I'm sorry, what was the, the topic? Yeah, town, it says uh, town owned land review. Yep. Then we have a trust meeting update and affordable housing. Yeah, so the, the right town owned land review, we, we presented that to the affordable housing trust. They were going to look at it. Uh, they've had some discussions over the past two meetings, uh, but haven't made a decision yet on um, what to do. Uh, you know, we gave them the recommendations that, you know, of the three properties that we thought they should look at, that they should consider moving to the trust. Um, originally they were going to try to move all three. Now they're thinking they should just move one. I go to the meetings and answer their questions and maybe they'll put something on the warrant. Um, but it needs to go on the warrant to get it into the trust. So I've encouraged them that they should put at least one, but if not all three, uh, on the warrant to, to move into the trust. So our town meeting, um, December 12th, I believe, is um, usually the kind of clean up the budget and books. Yeah, it won't be in that one. Yeah. Won't be in that one. Okay. No, it would it would have to, the next available would be at the annual town meeting. Hey, yeah, right? Okay. So is there anything, Lauren, for the for the trust or for us on this warrant at all? I don't think so. No. December 12th is a Sunday. Is that meeting on Sunday? Oh, it's no. uh it's December 13th. It's a Monday. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The 13th, yep. Yeah. Okay. And it's at the high school. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's going to be indoors <laughs> with a mask. With a mask, I'm going to guess. Yes. <laughs> Six feet apart. <laughs> it's funny because you don't have to be six feet apart when you're going up the steps. That's the thing that always threw me off. <laughs> All right, everyone will be going up the step, but as soon as you get in the gym, they'll be six feet apart. <laughs> so. Um, the trust meeting update, Rob, I think you said there was one tomorrow. Yeah, so I don't have an update because it's in the future. What do they usually meet at like 8.30 or something? Yeah. AM? Yep. Are you attending that or? Yep. Okay. Um, and then our consultant update. Oh, that was the update on the- um, the self made the from the Catholic church. Yep. Okay. So that's good. Oh yeah. The other update on that is with the consultant said she could not help us with the town owned property. Oh, maybe this was the town owned property we were talking about. Uh, so Ted Carr, uh, knows an individual in the DHCD. Uh, he had reached out to him, um, and he had taken some time off, but should be back this month. And so Ted and I are going to meet with him to see how we could potentially get 
those units into our um, affordable housing stock. Just to remind people, the issue that we ran into was um, because they're already affordable, they can't go through the normal local action unit process because the local action unit requires you to create new affordable housing. So even though it's not in the, 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 the uh, inventory, uh, it's not new, so that process doesn't work. So we're just going directly to the HCD to try to see how they can, how we can make it work. Well, that's good. So we have a consultant then that will help us maybe is this one time or do you think they'll stick uh, so around? The consultant's going to help the, uh, the individual um, okay. with the, 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 the property across from the Catholic church. She said she could not help us with these. She, we, we spoke okay. with her. We went through it. We went through the, the things and goes like, no, nope, this is not a local action unit. She spoke to DHCD as well and said, nope, I can't help. Yeah. So okay. We're just going to go directly to Ted's car's uh, contact. All right, so the only thing left on the agenda really is any member comments and um, kind of the, the only thing I really that I really wanted to, to throw out there first was um, I believe and I, I could be wrong, I, I thought we had to report to the selectmen twice a year before each town meeting. Because they, they had us reporting like quarterly or something like that when we, we made the change to say we're going to do it twice a year because before town meeting we have to give them a report anyway an annual report and we were going to do it twice a year so I don't know um, if you have that or not on your radar or if we were going to do that. Lauren had sent out a very nice kind of summary of, of affordable housing to the sewer commission several months ago. And it kind of listed what was out there. And it was, it was really good, Lauren, that, that summary. And I thought that it probably wouldn't hurt uh, to put something together with the trust to say, okay, this is what we've been doing collectively for affordable housing, especially since in the, in the Cohasset Mariner for two months in a row, and they actually just republished the same damn article twice is what they did. Um, they were talking about, you know, the, the bill that the governor signed about changing 40B and how it was going to impact towns. And it, doesn't impact us at all, really, that I recall. But, you know, people read the paper and said, hey, what's going on with affordable housing? So, um, you know, usually the selectmen are the last to know about stuff going around town, <laughs> except for who's complaining, right? So um, it probably would behoove us to put something together and present it to the selectmen, maybe not the hour before the meeting, but perhaps prior to the, the town meeting, unless, I don't know, every department usually doesn't stand up at the fall town meeting. Uh, I know it usually goes quicker and they can hardly get a quorum. So um, I, I don't know what we wanna do. If we wanna stand up and say something about affordable housing for 10 minutes, um, or what What are your thoughts, Rob? Yeah, I mean, we can ask the select board what they'd like. I mean, um... I'm, I'm happy to stand up or have anybody else stand up and, and talk a little bit, but yeah, no, we, we are supposed to report, but yeah, I don't think it's really been top of mind. Um, you know, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think if um, we talk to Steve who enjoys speaking publicly, yeah. um, maybe we can do something together to say, hey, look, we're, we're here, we're, we've been working hard through, all through COVID trying to help increase stock. Um, we've gotten emails and some calls from people about 30, 390. Uh, we've, we've had veterans, we've had people with disabilities mm -hmm. and um, they've gone directly to the property owner as well saying, hey, what, when's the supportable housing coming? So there's kind of a mini list going already uh, with them uh, of people who want to get in. And um, unfortunately, some people told, were told to call the town manager <laughs> to ask oh, him why. To I'm ask sure him why, that. <laughs> right? To ask him why it's not available yet, right? So um, I, I thought it would be helpful to, for him, if no one else, that we stand up and say, hey, look, we're the ones actually working on affordable housing. So um, here's our report to the town. Uh, it, it probably would help us. 
So whatever thoughts anybody has, I, I just think from a, if we're going to come out in 2022, sometime in June and start asking to raise money for housing, they might want to know who we are prior to asking. So yeah. Yeah, Lauren has a question. Sure. I just have a recommendation in terms of like process for an update. I think the select board would be more than happy to hear an update from the group, whether it's, you know, one of uh, the steering committee or the trust or both together. And I think um, given the sort of timeline and the regular updates that are planned, typically we have by year end, we do like each committee gives their report that goes then into the annual report that feeds into the annual right. town meeting process. So what I would suggest is that that could be something that we, you know, start to discuss and prepare and have that annual report that you can do a preview to the select board at one of their meetings upcoming, and then it will filter into the town report. And then if you'd like to say something at annual town meeting, I think that would be an appropriate sort of timing of what you do. Um, but an intro to the select board is never something uh, that would hurt. I think this ties, this topic very much ties into their goals or, around community health and supporting master planning and all of that. So, um, you know, and I'm happy to help coordinate an agenda visit uh, with one of their, you know, find out their schedule and what might work. Yeah, I think um, if it's December 13th, if we get in there the week before, because their attention span is going to be limited by the amount of stuff that they have to pay attention to before town meeting. Um, if we're able to present something to say, this is what we're doing and, and leave behind a document like you had written about what's on our plate, that would be great. And then obviously um, usually in January, or February, we have to have our act together and a placeholder for the annual town meeting. Uh, so whether it be uh, articles in the warrant or a report uh, placeholder, uh, we would definitely have that on our plate to do in January, February, so. And by the May town meeting, it'll be, it would be really good to have just a little bit of presence spoken to as to what's going on with the first project with the 808 Jerusalem so that people know that, you know, for one, CPC monies that were given to the Affordable Housing Trust are going to good use, that we're trying to do our due, due diligence and have come up with this project with Habitat in conjunction. And just to kind of let them be aware, we don't need to start fundraising right that minute, but, you know, to let them know that this is in the works so that they don't suddenly find out about it later on. Sounds good. Beth, do you have anything? Uh, oh, you turned yourself on mute. <laughs> I know it's forever. Am I muting? I'm not muting. <laughs> yeah. um, I think your idea of us doing kind of a summary, you know, to get in front of the selectmen, it's a good idea. So we're going to have to hustle because that's only a couple of weeks away. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I think with Lauren's um, sheet that she had given to us, I'm, I'm not saying we're going to, you know, cheat sheet here, but can, it's just, it, it, it was pretty. It was pretty damn good. So <laughs> we just kind of have to update it, and um, and Rob is quick on his feet, um, and I know Steve because he's a runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and Steve Gomer can pretty much talk to what the trust is doing pretty well. So. Um, I think being, it would a, be being a former select person too. Yeah, you yeah. Know how to spin it? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, they're not doing in person, right, okay. Lauren? They are actually. They started last week with their first time in person, and I think that they're also planning to do in person tonight. Is so, it with the owl? owl? Uh, I think that's what it's called. The technology device that owl. Yes. I think so. It's something similar what to is that. that. It means that it's in person and it's like mm -hmm. a hybrid. Yes. Yeah. The only caveat that we had last time was that the um, the virtual could only be viewed, but it wasn't interactive. So we don't have that capability yet, but we're making progress in the way of hybrid meetings. Yeah, we had our first elder affairs meeting in person and Mary Marion joined us because we used the owl and it went really well, except, you know, Nancy had crappy cell service in, in Marshfield. So other yeah. than that, it was fine. You know, the people that were on heard us fine and it, it looked really well. Um, the, the, it's basically a little tower. It looks like a coffee pot and um, that yeah, sits in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And it just rotates around um, while uh -huh. people are speaking and zeroes in on somebody who's speaking. So uh, it, it really went well. So um, I'd be curious to see what the selectmen do. But yeah, it'd be nice to get in person. 
um, if we can. So, but it's kind of hard to sit six feet apart and at that office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see, but um, yeah, maybe we can uh, schedule a Tuesday night, or just well, I, I don't know how many multiple meetings they're going to have between now and then, but we'll have to see about having Carrie Thompson and I get us a meeting. Yep, I'll I'll reach out um, after this actually to confirm their next meeting date. I know they're meeting tonight, and they're not meeting next Tuesday, so I think the next one will be the thirtieth. Um, and I, I don't know where they fall into December. So yeah, so that the, so the uh, yeah that would be December seventh would be the following Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so November one, I'm sorry, November thirty, December seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll confirm whether they're meeting on the seventh or not. And we'll we'll go from there. Sounds great. Yeah, the seventh would probably be realistic to be able to get something together. Yep. Yeah, they, uh... So anybody had any comments, Rob? Anything on um, the horizon? Just got the affordable housing trust tomorrow. Hopefully get the approval so we can move forward on the um Catholic Church stuff. Haven't heard anything from the Harbor guys in a while. So, yep. So Mary, Mary's on the phone. Chomping to knock the hotel down, from what I hear. They, they can't wait to knock that hotel down. And uh, yeah. the Harbor guys. Oh, and it needs it. <laughs> so, so, Mary, you're on the phone. Um, you're on mute. I know she said she was calling in from California. Oh. oh. So she's still three hours behind us on the Zoom? Yes. <laughs> so she's just getting the beginning of the meeting. Just finished lunch. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on and, and getting us a quorum. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I was like completely. <laughs> no, we are all having Zoom issues anyway. So we, we started. Yeah, we late, actually so. had just gotten on right before yeah. you. Joined. Yeah. Um, well, before we all take off, I just want to confirm, I had put in some meeting dates into January, but we can certainly schedule in December. I just know it's a busy month for folks. So our, if we if, met according to our typical schedule, it'd be either the 14th or the 21st. Or December. Well, let's I, not do the 21st. I, I think if, no, no, no. I, I think we can skip December if you're okay with it, Rob. I think I meeting with the selectmen would be good enough for me. Um, so how do you want to do the the presentation though like have lauren send out what she's sent and then just yeah tweak it yeah that we can take a look at it yeah yep. and just individually comment not as a group you could also um you can send individual comments to me and i can take them together and and put them into one document that way it's not cross collaboration we do that with like planning board if they all send me information and then i send it back out to them that would be good. Yeah, so don't don't reply to all, just reply right. directly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And is the only way to see the agenda to go on the town website and see what's listed there? Right. Yes. The problem it's is the is way. they posted it has to be posted 72 hours before the meeting and they wait until like hour 71 to post it. So Okay. Um did we get minutes? Did we do minutes? Or? Yeah, that's next on the agenda. So, uh right. approval of the minutes from last month. I don't think I sent them, did I? Or yeah. did I? I forget if I sent them. I either send them right away or right before this one. I forget if I did. I didn't yeah, see them, but I, I didn't, didn't see them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I owe some minutes. Sorry about that. So the next one meeting would be like January 11th or the 18th. Yeah, I'll note that January 17th is Martin Luther King Day. So that's, I know some people have holidays around then. Oh, is that school vacation? You want to do the 11th? Yeah. So maybe we should do the 11th. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. school vacation week too. That means everyone's gone skiing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we're if we're not doing December at all, then it's good to have it a week earlier yeah. anyway. Rob, are you a skier? Not at all. Oh, oh okay. All right. So January eleventh, and yeah. we'll do another Zoom. Yeah. Until so the governor, um, as we learned, our meeting uh, at Elder Affairs has extended the no in-person meeting zoom stuff until march but they're also leaving some discrimination to the towns as they lift their own covid restrictions that they deem appropriate 
per town. So a lot of other towns around us are having in-person meetings uh, with and without masks. So we can't say, well, if they're doing it, how come we're not doing it? It's all based on the Board of Health and uh, how confident they are in the risk levels. Um, that we know or... much about Cohasset as to what the, you know, I know that I had heard something last week on just local news that um, statistically across the state that in compared to say June, July, when there were like 70 something cases per day on average, that for last week, it was averaging 1700. And I just looked today and it was 1900 per day for the last week span. Yeah, so, so I it's, mean, it's definitely gone up and then you got Thanksgiving added in, you know, where people are gonna be traveling in family groups and so on, so. Yeah, so the Board of Health has a formula. It's and, the challenging thing too is logistics for us because we've actually lost a couple of our meeting spaces over COVID because we weren't using them and now they got taken over by other things. Like yeah. we like we had three meeting spaces in town hall. IT took over the basement. We have offices now that took up the front one. So the only meeting room is a Selectman's conference room, which is very small. So realistically now we can only have meetings over at Wilcott Commons and then it just becomes like a logistics. Because yeah. especially the, the, the silver lining of Zoom, right. Zoom allowed you to have, as long as you had enough accounts and people, you could have as many meetings as you wanted in one day. Whereas now yeah. it's like, we're fighting for space. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's a you little can, complicated. You can attend from wherever, wherever you are. We're going to be away for a month from mid-February to mid-March, South Carolina, trying to get away from the cold. And so I can zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I think um, as far as Chris Sr. is concerned, we're going to continue the Zooms, but he's allowing the hybrid of in-person with the OWL. It worked out pretty well for us. So if it works out well for the selectmen, I think he'll probably allow it. Um, but I think you're going to see that it's, you know, we were excited to get together. So we're kind of a unique committee in town. <laughs> um, some other committees, eh, well, the Zoom is comfortable. Um, and you're working from home, so um, it's kind of more convenient to just continue working from home if you can. And um, so I, I get that part of it. I mean, I had to drive to Braintree yesterday. I had to get there by three o'clock for a meeting from three to five. And and then and you're in the people, traffic coming home. Oh. oh, and then four people decided to join by Zoom. I'm like, well, when did, when, when did I have that option? <laughs> yeah, thanks for telling me. <laughs> thanks for telling me, you know, and I'm like, holy cow. So anyway, um, yeah. Um, so that that's where we're at with the uh, with the Zoom meeting. So I think um, you know I, I don't think we'll be in person for a while. <coughs> you know, it's it's not that it, we're meeting every other month. I think Rob at this point. Yeah. And so we meet in January. We'd meet again in March. By that time, the governor will lift whatever he thinks he's going to lift if things subside. Um, yeah, probably for the winter too. It's just as easy. Four o'clock works, and you know. Yeah, so the only other meeting room that Lauren didn't mention is on the second floor of the old town hall where there's no heat. Oh, oh that, built, that room <laughs> the, is terrible. The front, it's, it's, it's really in the front. Yeah, all I've those been windows in that room. are, oh, it's, oh, it's no heat. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. we'll zoom. Yeah, zoom. It's yeah. also really bad in August when you're having a heat wave. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That room. Yeah, but by, the, by the time you get up there, you're sweating and you get into the room, then you start freezing. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, does anybody have anything else? I think we're all set. All right, um, so the next meeting is January 11th. Okay. Uh, we'll pass something around and see if we can get in front of the selectmen. Uh, we'll more than likely join by Zoom. Uh, maybe a couple of us can show up in person, see how that goes. We'll coordinate it with uh, Housing Trust. Sound good, Rob? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you for we'll, taking the lead. Yep. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. So moved. All in favor. Oh, so moved. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Happy everyone. And if Thank anybody has any other thoughts about this whole fundraising side for Cohasset, Rob, if you want to find out more directly from Noreen sure. or whoever, you know, to just make sure we're on the same page about what's required, expected. Oh, we will do. Okay. Have a Thanks. happy Thanksgiving. All right. Happy, yep. Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks, Take care. everyone. Thank you. All right, bye. Thanks, Lauren.